<laughs> Good morning. Today we look at Acts chapter 5, verses 22 through 42, um, on this first day of summer, June 21st. Uh, anyway, as yesterday the, the disciples had been arrested and for again preaching a teaching about Jesus and and they were in prison and um, and as we ended you know yesterday the uh, the disciples had been set free by the angel and were back in the temple preaching but you know the chief priests the high priest and the Sadducees none of them were aware of this yet they hadn't you know been to Solomon's portico but so we begin today with the, the temple police going to the jail to bring the apostles back in front of the high priest and the Sadducees and, and you know, the, the whole council. And they get there, they find the guards in place, the jail securely locked, but the apostles are gone. And you know, when it says apostles, I mean, you know, first just Peter and John had been arrested and and here now, as we read further in, you know, as soon as they, you know, Peter and the apostles continue. So I, I'm, I've always assumed that it was the whole group of 12 that are arrested and put into jail. And so think about that. For 12 men just to disappear, the jail securely locked, you know, the, the locks in place, the guards there, everything in place. I mean, this had to be as surprising as the tomb of Jesus empty on that first Sunday morning. You know, how, how could this happen? And... So the, the guards go to the high priest, the council, and say, the men aren't there. We, you know, we don't know what happened. And they explain, you know, that everything was secure. The guards were in place. They had been up all night, you know, guard, and, and the men are gone. And then someone comes. I mean, they were perplexed, of course. But then someone comes and says, you know, those guys you arrested, they're in Solomon's portico preaching and teaching again. And so they go. They go there and they find... They find these men there again, preaching. So they again kind of secure them. They, it doesn't say they arrest them, but they say, let's just say it politely. They invited these men to come and uh, be heard in front of the council again. And they did it peacefully because it says that they, they the, the, the guards, the police, were afraid they would be stoned by the people if they arrested these men again, because the people were so eagerly listening and so eagerly wanting to hear this good news. So they bring them in front of the, the council and the high priest says to them, you know, we gave you strict orders. I can almost see that finger point. We gave you strict orders. No more teaching and preaching in the name of this Jesus. What in the world do you think you're doing? You know, and, and uh, with Peter, it says, and the other apostles. And so this is where I get some backing as to, you know, it wasn't just Peter and John arrested, but most likely, you know, all 12 of them, you know, but it evidently more than just two or three. Peter says we must obey God rather than any human authority. And, and we can go back to uh, Psalm 118.8. I want to read that to you. It is better to take, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in mankind. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in any earthly princes. You know, so here, and there are many other places in the Bible, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, it's better to trust in the Lord than to trust in your own instinct. I mean, I didn't get that right. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart and do not rely on your own in, you know, intentions. But, you know, to trust in the Lord with everything. So here Peter is talking about, you know, trusting in God. we got to do what God uh, tells us to do the Holy Spirit, and and then he goes on, and again he he preaches, teaches to the chief priests, the Sadducees, and all of them about Jesus and about God's love. And he says, verse thirty-two: We are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey Him. And of course, then the next thing that happens, I mean, verse 36 says, when they, the, the, the Sadducees, the council, heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But Gamaliel, a respected teacher, and he's one of those that, you know, taught other people about the Hebrew Scriptures. Gamaliel was a very highly respected teacher of the Scriptures. He stood up and he, 
He said, let's put these men outside for a minute, and then I want to talk to you. And then he reminds them that, you know, a few years back, there had been this fellow uh, Thutis that had rose up and claimed to be somebody, he says. And he got to have like 400 followers. And then when he died, you know, nothing more happened than, you know, his this sect fell apart. And maybe, maybe this same thing will happen with this Jesus. But, verse 39, if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you will even be found to be fighting against God. And so they were convinced by Gamaliel to not harm the disciples, to not, you know, block them up, not stone them, not kill them, not, you know, that way, but to just put up with them, to put up with them as they were teaching. Although, in verse 40, they had them flogged, and then they ordered them, they ordered them again, do not speak in the name, you know, and don't speak in the name of Jesus, you know, and they let them go. And, and of course, the disciples, what do they do? It says, after the council released them, they rejoiced that they were flogged for their faith, you know, that they were found worthy to suffer dishonor for the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and to proclaim Christ, the Messiah. And, you know, so nothing that these religious leaders did or tried to do to stop the spread of Jesus, not even waiting to see if, since Jesus had died, if these, you know, if these believers, if this group of believers would, you know, just, just kind of fold, just kind of give up, you know, nothing more is going to happen and, you know, it'll come to an end, but it doesn't come to an end. Um, so that's, you know, we, we, we look at so many, so many things there. And I, I just, as I was looking about at this and thinking about where Peter says, you know, we must trust God and we must obey God rather than any human authority. And I thought about Psalm 118.8. Um, if, if you do a, a Bing search or a Google search, uh, put in s center of the Bible. And I know on Bing, it will sh come up with Psalm 118.8. And it'll tell you that there are 594 chapters before Psalm 118 and 594 chapters after. So Psalm 118 is the center chapter of the Bible. Psalm 117, er, 117 is the shortest psalm. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm. But, and then if you add uh, the 594 chapters ahead, plus the 594 chapters after, that's 1,184. So Psalm 118, or no, 1,188 rather, that's Psalm 118, verse 8, is they say is the center of the Bible. And whether that's exactly true or not is beside the point, but it's a nugget of, of wisdom, a nugget that we should hold on to and, and always remember that it's better to trust in the Lord than to rely on human understanding and wisdom. And it's so much better to, to follow what God would have us do than to you know, follow the whims and the wills of the world. And I'm just going to read for you again Psalm, or Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I, um, I know that if I thought for just a, a minute, I would be able to recite these by heart. I've been able to for years. But, you know, it's verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will guide your paths. You know, and... So here we have, you know, um, just like John 3:16 is the gospel in a nutshell, the story of Jesus. These two verses, or these three verses, Psalm 118:8 and Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, are, are such nuggets of, of wisdom for us to, to follow God, to listen to God, and to put God above all other things. Reflecting back to the first commandment, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods. And, you know, if we could do that, if everyone in the world could do that, what a peaceful and wonderful world it would be to trust in God above all things.